The Youth's Instructor, February 7, 1895. Beware of imitations. Association with learned men is esteemed by some more highly than communion with the God of heaven. The statements of learned men are thought of more value than the highest wisdom revealed in the word of God. But while infidelity is proudly lifting up its head, heaven looks down upon the vanity and nothingness of human reasoning. For man in and of himself is vanity. All the merit, all the moral dignity of men has been theirs simply in and through the merits of Jesus Christ. What, then, are the speculations of the greatest minds of the greatest men that have ever lived? Yet men place their human reasonings before the revealed will of God and present to the world that which they claim is higher wisdom than the wisdom of the Eternal. In their vain imaginations, they would bring down the economy of heaven to suit their own inclinations and desires. The great God has a law by which to govern his kingdom, and those who trample upon that law will one day find that they are amenable to its statutes. The remedy for transgression is not to be found in declaring that the law is abolished. To abolish the law would be to dishonor it and to cast contempt upon the lawgiver. The only escape for the transgressor of law is found in the Lord Jesus Christ. For through the grace and atonement of the only begotten Son of God, the sinner may be saved and the law vindicated. The men who parade before the world as wonderful specimens of greatness and at the same time trample down the revealed will of God, robe man with honor, and talk of the perfection of nature. They paint a very fine picture, but it is an illusion, a flattering deception, for they walk in the sparks of their own kindling. Those who present a doctrine contrary to that of the Bible are led by the great apostate who was cast out of the courts of God. Of him before his fall it was written, Thou sealest up the sum, full of wisdom, and perfect in beauty. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth. And I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down, in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou wast perfect in thy ways from the day that thou wast created, till iniquity was found in thee. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings that they may behold thee. I will bring thee to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all them that behold thee. All they that know thee among the people shall be astonished at thee. Thou shalt be a terror, and never shalt thou be any more. With such a leader, an angel expelled from heaven, these supposed wise men of earth may fabricate bewitching theories with which to infatuate the minds of men. Paul said to the Galatians, who hath bewitched you, that ye should not obey the truth? Satan has a masterly mind, and he has his chosen agents, by which he works to exalt men, and clothe them with honor above God. But God is clothed with power. He is able to take those who are dead in trespasses and sins, and by the operation of the Spirit which raised Jesus from the dead, transform the human character bringing back to the soul the lost image of God. Those who believe in Jesus Christ are changed from being rebels against the law of God into obedient servants and subjects of His kingdom. They are born again, regenerated, sanctified through the truth.
This power of God, the skeptic will not admit, and he refuses all evidence until it is brought under the domain of his finite faculties. He even dares to set aside the law of God and prescribe the limit of Jehovah's power. But God has said, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For after that in the wisdom of God the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified, unto the Jews a stumbling block, and unto the Greeks foolishness. But unto them which are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God, and the wisdom of God.